G'day guys, my name's Josh. You can call me Ja Woodle and welcome back to 7 Days to Die in Alpha 18 where I've come back to my testing world to do some more building, some more testing and some more experimentation and today I've actually got an idea that hopefully can be like an addition to a base that you've already got either on your walls or your base itself, whichever one you prefer and I'm thinking that this will hopefully be a way to buy yourself some time. When everything goes fully tits up and the zombies are coming through the walls, they're beating their way through you need a way to buy yourself some time a couple of seconds to fall back to either like a panic room or just wherever you're keeping your shotgun or whatever you might need to do those last valuable seconds before you get torn apart by the horde that's what i'm here to try and buy i've got an idea of how to do it i'm just hoping with some tinkering we can get it to be an actual viable option but before i head out into the park to go out there and build something to give it a red hot crack i need to as always head down through the mvp tower down into the hall of legends to to say thank you to three more awesome people and it still feels weird it still feels weird going right into the new wing as opposed to into the old wing that we've now filled with names this wing is still under construction i've started building the roof but it's coming along rather nicely it's just a really big ass build but today we are thanking joe p nexus and alathol so thank you you three and everyone else in this ever expanding hall of legends for all of your wonderful support where we're going to build today. This park is getting really, really congested. There's builds everywhere. I need to find a decent spot to build something not too big, but something just kind of test the theory. Maybe just kind of out here. It's, it's ever expanding. There's bases all over the gaff. Just going to find a nice little open area for me to go and have my way with. I've had to go a little bit deeper than I would normally like to. It turns out all the terrain out here is lumpier and bumpier than a teenager's face the first time a girl smiles at him. So I had to go a fair way down to get some actual smooth level terrain. So what I'm going to be doing, you know how in like every sci-fi movie ever, the bad guys have a blast? You'll think of like Star Wars or Phantom Menace when Qui-Gon Jinn's like coming through the big doors and they go, oh, close the blast shields and have like extra doors that close over. Little do they know, it's a goddamn lightsaber. That's not going to hold him back either. You need some bloody destruction destroyers out there with some shields but yes everyone has an extra set of doors that close down to stop the threat coming through so that's what i'm going to be trying to do uh be trying to do with some garage doors we're going to make ourselves some garage door blast shields i don't know how it's going to go but these things are reasonably strong like if i grab the powered ones i might just grab the normal ones that's the, the point that one grab the normal ones as well just to kind of see what kind of hit points these bad boys actually have so the normal ones what are you doing you're 7500 health that's quite a lot of uh, hit points for zombies to beat their way through. I mean, sure, it may not buy you a whole week of time, but if zombies are pouring through whatever hole they've created in your walls, that is going to be a godsend. This one is double that again. So you've got plenty of time, depending on how much, how many more resources you want to invest into this, for you to kind of lower something down and give yourself some breathing room. You can even use uh, use this as like a blast shield, maybe even like a portcullis, I suppose. If they're coming through your entryway, you could drop something down and give yourself a moment. But I'm going to build something to give that a test because i want to know if i could use this but have it drop down automatically anyone can flick a switch when shit goes rough and like you know block out the zombies i want to know if you're not paying attention to that part of your wall at that particular moment if you can have something to keep you safe when you're otherwise distracted because if you're like me anything shiny could be the end of you because you go running off chasing a butterfly and the zombies come and punch you in the back of the nose Clearly, by the way, this is going to be a later game thing. Depending on how many doors you want, it's going to be pretty bloody expensive. The powered ones, the steel ones, are forged, like 90 forged steel springs, mechanical parts, electrical parts. That's a lot of materials. The regular ones, the ones that aren't powered, are forged iron springs and mechanical parts. So, like, there's a lot there that you need to get to make this. If you're making multiple of these, that's going to be a pretty resource-intensive process and probably not doable until you're pretty well set up already. This is like just like an extra little sprinkle on top of your base. If you want to make it a little bit more zombie proof a little bit better just for when like the real big hordes come like demolishes and stuff this is what we want to be doing so to start i'm just going to build something pretty basic out of flagstone because flagstone is relatively weak and should be uh let me test what i'm thinking in my head rather easily so we'll go through like this and just build myself a nice little cube to live in how wide were the doors again i think they were like five wide i think how, how are we looking on this yeah that's gonna look fine just right in the middle like that leave that one there just for reference but a nice little square five well it's gonna be seven by seven by seven i suppose get a whole bunch of doors in here just to protect us when the zombies come yeah. 
I just realized that I think based on my current schedule that this video might actually come out next year. So happy new year, everyone out there who's probably watching this in 2020. It's still 2019 for current me, but that's right, whatever. At the moment, I'm making videos like a broke, desperate actress who's fresh to LA and making some questionable decisions just to pay her rent. I'm making a whole bunch of videos to get far enough ahead that hopefully in January, I can take a holiday. But that is a long time away for me. So let's keep on going with this. So what we're going to be doing at the moment, I'm just going to be doing uh, a powered... Uh, a garage door just to kind of prove the point so what i'm thinking is i've got this like a nice little cube here if i bang a door for example just there and then like at the front here we'll grow another layer up just because we can like that and then we get say like some arrow slits or whatever like that and we're going to put some arrow slits here for us to fire and try and fight the horde with but assuming at some point this is going to go wrong that's the one i need i went straight past it though yep that one there we arrow slits all the way across there just like the old burger base but at some point they're probably going to break through that so what I want to know is if when they do that, can I close this door behind? You may remember in the day 7000 against the burger base video, eventually the demolishers got close enough that they broke down the walls and that's when I was cooked. I was doing fine until I wasn't doing fine anymore. So if I can make it that this door closes, blocks off their entry point when I need it to, then I can stay safe while the zombies spend their time beating their way through this. Now how I get that to happen automatically, I don't know. There's two ways to do it. Either I can make it so it's the um uh the close on on system that i was using for like the underground uh base entry and stuff like that where when something sees something it turns on and closes so maybe that's the way to do it or i just run all of the power systems actually that's not a bad idea actually if i run all the power systems connected to maybe this bottom rung down here like if i get a bunch of relays and connect it all the way along the bottom down here maybe that will work out for me because as soon as i break one of those blocks and actually break their way in it'll break apart this chain and then the door will close Maybe that's the way to do it. It looks a bit ugly, but I think that might be the go. I'll give that a crack first and see how it goes. Or that's going to take up the spot of the door. Oh, we're going to have to push the door a little bit further back to like here. How's that going to look? Oh, I'm not sure. Maybe we can get it to open that way as well. I don't know. We'll wire it up. We'll see how it goes. This is all experimentation. We're just going to figure out what the best way is going to be. I'm not coming into this knowing the correct answer here. That should be fine. I connect you up to there. That'll just open up like that. That's perfect. So that's what I wanted. I wanted something you could add to an existing base. Like if you have a weak point, which is often the part that you're fighting on, you just need to sprinkle that little bit of fuck yeah. I can't say that earlier in the videos, by the way, because the YouTube algorithm will flag it, and that will be bad news for me. But yeah, a little bit of fuck yeah, just on top of your awesome base. You got that nice minty fresh steak, sprinkle that little bit, and just make it that little bit better. So I want it to go just like that, and then hopefully, if this all works out how I want it to, say they break that block behind. Let's go from the other side, actually. So, okay, they're coming for you. They're breaking out the arrow slits, but they can't get in until one of these blocks get destroyed. Oh, actually, that might still work, though, because I have to get through... I think I have to get through that to get actually inside. I don't know. I'll leave that one open for now, just to kind of give them somewhere to aim for. Let's put a couple of big boys on the other side. We're not going to go Chelsea this time. We're going to go a couple of bikers, because they hit a whole lot harder than Chelsea does. All right, I'm on the inside. Let's make sure I have my insta-kill pistol for when they do inevitably break through. Grab that. Shoot in the air. All right. So you guys should target that little relay there. Come on, take a swing. There you go. Break through that flagstone nice and quickly. Now, hope... Oh. Oh, ha, ha, ha. It worked perfectly. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. So as soon as they actually make it through the wall, the, the, the door's like, mm, uh, yeah, now, nah, mate. Not gonna happen. You ain't gonna fry this French fry. You're gonna have to sprinkle some sauce on that. So they get through, and it immediately shuts right in front of them. I love that it shuts so quickly as well. It opens nice and slowly, but it closes super duper fast right in their stupid beady faces. Oh, that's great. That's actually really good. Okay, we're, we're cooking with gasoline now. We are rocking and rolling. I reckon we can improve this though. Let's get rid of all of this. Oh, the theory has been proven. I love it when I have an idea and you test it out and it works exactly how I wanted it to. So there was one other way I was thinking of doing this, and that was with tripwires. If I grab some of those and just put you on either side over here. So when someone breaks through, they will hit the tripwire and everything will be okay because that will set off the door to close. Now, once again, this is rather difficult because they don't have the ability to uh, dictate which setting does what to power and stuff. You can't say when this turns on, I want the door to close. You can only say when this turns on, I want the door to open, which means we have to use the inverted power 
trick which is good it has a lot of purposes and i like it a lot it does have some issues especially on smaller builds like this at the moment where the more power you're running on like solar or batteries or whatever is the more components you have to run to sap all that power i'm not going to go through all of uh, how the inverter power system works i've done it a lot through other builds but you should know that yeah if you're building something smaller you just don't have the space for all of the lights and all sorts of things that you need to make that happen for you because right now that's on and open but i need that to close when someone trips the wire which is the hard part i do think this will probably work but i don't think it'll be as foolproof as it was the other the other way we're having like the destructive tendencies of the zombies work in our favor this one is just a tripwire going through where the arrow slots are so we've done reversible power before i'll quickly run you through it again we have a low battery bank over here only 29 watts are the lowest battery i could find just the weakest piss one over here going down to the tripwire across to there which has uh what is it, i think a 10 seconds left so you have 10 second power duration up to a battery bank with more power and that's connected to the door and all these lights i left the lights out there because i put them all in this room it was brighter than the wrong end of a baboon over there but you can see as i oh, sorry, this is kind of reset everything as i went through that tripwire it turned off all the lights it overloads the first battery bank and kicks onto the second one until that happens so you can see there that should work pretty well let's test it again walk on through there it made the sound, but it didn't close the door. This is the problem with the reversal power. Occasionally, it glitches out the game and it forgets how to actually operate the doors. And yeah, it's like it looks like it's on, but in the game's mind, it's off. It's all nice and confusing and not super fun to when the doors stop working how you want it to. I got to replace that door and get it reconnected again. It's just, I mean, look, it's a lot of tedious hassle for just not having the option to say on is off and what, you know, just be able to flip, invert that signal. I really wish you'd be able to do it and make my life so much easier. I just can't get it to work how I want it to do. I've closed seven days and come back into it, and I know that it's wired right, because look, when it turns off, it puts the door back to its reset position being closed, and it makes the sound effect when you go through the tripwire, and you're like, hey, look, it's like, you're, you're, the game knows it should be closing here, but it's like, mm, uh, yeah, no, nah, buddy, not going to do it for you. You're just going to stay up on the roof like that. So that kind of throws that idea out the window i mean it should work in my mind it should work but i can't test it therefore it's not going to happen for me today but that's okay sometimes not everything goes according to the plan is rule park sometimes you have an idea sometimes you start building it and then it just like sticks its middle finger right up ya and tells you to go jump off a medium-sized cliff so not so great on that front so we'll get rid of the, the trip wires there but i don't know if you can get that to work go for your life but as i said at the start like the reversible power it works but it's real gimmicky. Sometimes it just doesn't do what you want it to do. So do that at your own risk. I'm going to go back to what I had before, though, with those relays down the bottom that the zombies have to destroy to get in. Especially because if you have, like, an actual entryway here, right? If this is your base and you have a, a bit more space between you and the zombies, you can fall back and start shooting with a bow and arrow, whatever you want to do. You can see them coming when shit's really about to go wrong. Fall back to a safe spot. You've run the risk of getting yourself locked out. But hey, why not? Let's, just, let's add a little gamble to this mix let's get a little, a little bit more how you going let's add a little bit more to this and see if we can make it so that when the zombies do actually get through you have another layer of defense so we're going to build something that's a bit of a callback to like the ancient days of castle building and moats and barriers and all sorts of things back where you can't use the pathing to your advantage so i know a lot of people don't like the way that you can cheese the ai in seven days there is like some purists i suppose you call them that just don't like to do that because if it was for me i would go just like uh in the fist only challenge and build myself a zombie proof force field out here because it's a much easier build than all of this nonsense but that is exploiting the ai it's a cheese move i know people don't like that and that's fine you should play games however you think you're going to have the most fun but if you don't want to build uh anything to cheese the ai then you could build something that they would have built way back when in the old castle so this is going to be like an atrium out here you come in here to get into your base and then to get into your actual base proper which is going to be over here you're going to have to go through a little bit of a schniggity snake just out here to get out and around now for you that works fine a little bit of extra footsteps but that's all right because when the zombies break through we're going to have our blast shield here drop down in front of them for the first thing and give you enough time to fall back to wherever you need to be but more importantly we're going to have some doors close over here and have another layer of protection here probably some arrow slots going across there let's grab my arrow slots actually and i know i put one on the back yep there it is just so i can go copy rotation make my life a bit easier going down the track just go like that you know we'll also do it and we'll put some arrow slits that was the right one too damn it keep going keep going 
I'll keep going. Put some arrow slits over here as well. Now, I know I'm talking about going back to the old age of like arrow, uh, well, castles and stuff like that, and I'm placing all these arrow slits backwards. That's just because the zombies aren't shooting arrows back at you, so you don't have to worry about having like arrows getting scooped into your eye socket as they come through. So, we're gonna do it like that. I have another door just here. But we're gonna make a little way for us to get around, but not the zombies, and keep them out here in a little killing box while they're trying to break through. Okay, so this is what I've got. It looks a little bit higgledy piggledy right now, but that's okay. It should work without having to cheese any of their AI. I mean, it still is a little bit. It's forcing them to attack at a certain point, but that's the way that the AI works since Alpha 17. It's not only like the random attacks that it was in Alpha 16, just making a beeline for you whatever that way they can. Now, they are smart zombies, so we have to adapt. We have to build for smart zombies. So I've got two levels of protection here. I've got my door out the front, which is like my main door. I've got some some arrow slots on either side just to kind of protect that door as much as I can. But then on the inside, I've also got these little relays down here on either side. Now, the important part here is that the door is stronger than the uh, arrow slots on the side. So the zombies are going to choose to attack there rather than the door. Just to make doubly sure of that, though, let's grab that. Let's get some more iron, I think it is, for those doors. I can't quite remember. Uh, let's go forge one. I think that's going to be the one, actually, not just the regular iron. Yes, it is. Okay, we'll upgrade that with our new stack of iron to make doubly sure that that I mean look the 2500 is far better than 500 just on the flagstone over there let's get some cobble just repair that one too boop just like that so they get through here they're gonna break through these before they're gonna break through the door which means it's gonna trigger our little uh relays down here which is gonna turn off this door here we get another couple of seconds to buy our time we're here we're defending the door they break through we pull back to here door closes we're safe for two more seconds now what we would normally do in peacetime is we cruise through here to get into our base like that. We have a nice little snaky entrance over there to kind of funnel the zombies around if they happen to get through there. By the way, we have some arrow slots over here to defend just in case. But they should ignore all of that because in their minds, the weak point, once again, is going to be these arrow slots here. So we can fall back to a defensive hard point, look through here, shoot the zombies as they come through. And if they break through those ones, once again, we have some more relays, connected to another blast door, that closes, we're safe. But at that point, we're pretty much cooked. I mean, we've got nowhere else to go back here. This is where your base, uh, I guess, would be. So you can fall back again to somewhere else. But you've got, like, layers of defense. And once they break through one, then they have to go to the next one. Because, I mean, these all look like flagstone. They're actually concrete at the moment. They're concrete painters look like so everything looks nice and uniform. So they shouldn't try and break through these walls here. They should focus on coming through that way. And that's kind of the key. You can have staggered defenses as long as it's always quicker for them to go through that particular area. Which is, you have to use you as bait. Dangerous, but worth it, I think. So this should work pretty well, I think. I'm not too sure about it, but I mean, it also looks kind of cool. I, I wasn't expecting it to look quite this right, but this looks like the kind of stuff you'd see in a castle, which makes me think it must actually work reasonably well. Just going to reinforce this door just to make doubly sure they don't go that way through the part that's just for people, not for zombies. And they do come through where I've prepared for them. Now, I mean, as I said before, this is like a late game stage kind of idea. You're not going to be spending your first stack of forged steel making yourself two powered garage. I mean, look, you can if you want, but there's probably more important things to be building at that point. This is when you're building a big castle, a big base, like your end game kind of stuff, and you want to make something that's a bit more zombie proof without using any sort of cheese AI. So we've got all this going on here. Uh, before I send a proper horde through it, let's just send a couple of bikers again. Uh, biker, like this. Biker ferals. You guys will stay out there for the moment, please. I'll get into position over here. Now leave this door open. Make sure I have their attention like that. Okay, right. So here we go. They should come over here and I should ignore, ignore the door, ignore, no, ignore the door. You bastards, why? Ah, this, this is why you run little soft tests before you spend your time running a horde through this. How has that happened? Why are they choosing to, do they just attack doors more than they attack uh, walls? I suppose that's the only kind of explanation I can get for that. That door is so much more powerful. You guys would have already been through these walls over here if you had it just focused on them, not on the door itself. Well, that was a bit of a miserable failure. Thank God I tested it. Failure is still a result, so we can still build from that. Maybe I need to make this a bit wider. Maybe they just didn't want to come up and, like, get stuck in this one little area here. Maybe they chose the bigger, more, more wide open option than just those ones. So I'll extend these walls out just a little bit. 
and hopefully they'll give us a better result. I don't know. I was expecting more from that, to be honest. Oh, shit. What's happened to me there? Oh, God. I fell to the ground. I think it may have actually been that I was using these steep wedges down here just for aesthetic reasons, just to get them to kind of, uh, you know, make it look nicer as I slope down from the arrow source. But I think they might have actually been the reason for my issues. I'm going to replace them just with regular blocks here. I've already done the front side over here. Plus, this also looks really cool. Like a nice big fat entrance out here. That looks kind of nice. I've still got my door, my doors, my blast shields up there as well. All right, let's try it. That's the wrong button. Let's try this again. Let's get ourselves the biker. Look at me and get a bunch of you. All right, now if I chill out just in here, what are you going to do this time? Is he going to go for the door? Why are you still going for the door? Why, why are you doing this? I mean, this just makes... What... I try and give you something like an easy soft target to attack. Look, look, it's like mostly damaged over here. I'm standing right here. You could reach me through the bloody arrow slits. But no, you decide to be a bitch and go the opposite way around. Now you're on my roof. All right, game. Cool. See, this is why... This is why cheesing the AI and like exploding the AI is so much better. The force field has never failed me. There's, like, there's other things that like takes the way the zombies think and just turns it against them. Never fails, except for when you put a door in, apparently. Why would they attack the stronger door rather than the weaker walls? That goes against everything that I thought the zombies did in seven days. It's completely against what, what I thought they were coded to do. That's really annoying. Ah, oh, yeah. See, look, th th now, uh, what I would do now is I would just build a door out the side here, make a force field on it so I have to attack this party. That's still going to be the weakest part of the wall, and the force field doesn't count as a path for them. So that's what I would do every other time. Why, why are you being so difficult this time around? Now, nah, even Chelsea is having issues with it. I don't, I don't understand. I thought maybe that the bike was just too big, and that was why they were going through the door, because the door maybe seems like a better option to them, instead of making a too wide hole. I, I even put a roof on top as well, something coming in. I don't understand. I don't understand why you guys are attacking doors first. Maybe that's part of their code now. Maybe they go for doors above all else. I've built all of this extra stuff. But also probably means that this bit in here probably isn't going to work. I'll just double check this one as well. Because this is two doors, which means it must be doubly as alluring for the zombies. Let's get a couple of Chelsea's out there, just like that. I'll put myself in here. How is this going to go? Are you guys going to come and attack the wall or attack the door? One of you is attacking the door, and the rest of you... Oh, they just can't make up their mind, it seems. Well, I'm going to stand here. You two are ruining the trend. I just want to see how this is going to go. This should work. I tested this before, but now everything's been thrown up in the air. I don't even know anymore. All right, so they're coming through. I'm, I'm sitting over here. I could kill them at any time that I wanted to. Taking their sweet-ass time breaking the arrows. Let's come on, Chelsea. For goodness sake. Sometime today would be nice. It's going to be 2021 before you actually break through. There you go. They're through. They're hitting the relay. Some point. Anything, you just... Oh, for goodness sake. Man, so I can say we go finally. I can see why there's always decent brains because clearly they have nothing of them on, the, on their own. I've tried to do it the game's way. I've tried to do it how it wants me to play the game and it just didn't work out how I thought it would. They're all of the things I thought the zombies would do, they didn't do. So I'm going to have to change this a little bit and make it a bit more, a bit more jawoodle, I suppose. I mean, look, if they're going to target the doors, that's a liability. That's something that I don't want. So instead, I'm going to get rid of the door here and I'm going to put in a cheeky little force field just here because then I'm, it's still going to be effectively the same thing. It's like a little kind of snake entrance into whatever base you might have on the backside over here but the zombies are going to come in and if i don't give them the apparently incredibly alluring target the, the thing they all seek instead of brains is apparently doors so if i want to give them a door to focus on and just put a force field there so that i can use this little entry way over here still got the door and the uh, arrow slots at the back here just in case they do manage to make it across somehow some way if they decide they apparently can run across the cattle grid instead of just like, freaking out about it and going the opposite way so if i force them force them like bend their arm and make it so they have to come this way there's no doors them to take they're going to come through here and the blast shield will work that's apparently that's i'm going to have to combine the ai cheese and some non-ai cheese to make this idea work i'm sure that smarter people out there will come up with a better solution than i have right here but hey look i never claim to be the best at this i just like to think that i can occasionally come up with an idea that might make seven days a little bit more fun and when it's not glitching out. Why is what my world is dying? Look at this. I've got bloody motion sensor trackers everywhere. What is going on here? I know I just said I wasn't gonna put a door in, but I'm gonna bang a door right in front of the force field there just to see if they still target the door when they can't actually go that way. We've got the force field underneath, so they're not gonna go that way. And it's a very basic build the force field, and it works so well. But more importantly, it means that I can still use this passage around here, but the zombies can't. So I'm very curious to know if they'll still target that door. If they target the door above all else 
else, even when it's not actually a viable option for them to path through. So I'll leave that one closed. I'll come and put my body in here, and I'll quickly get out of my body and just get like this. Go a couple more Chelsea's like that. All right, let's see how these guys are going to react to this one. AI on, please. Are they going to focus on the wall? Oh, she's looking at it. She wants the door. She wants the door too, but she's like, oh, wait, I can't actually use the door. So instead, I'm just not going to do it. They're coming through. They're all going through the wall, it seems, and up and over the top of the trying to at least. That's fine. Okay, this looks a bit more promising. So the door, when it's not a viable option, seems to just kind of get ignored by them, which is kind of nice. They're coming through this way, still taking a sweet-ass time to get the job done. And this should save me before the zombies actually make it all the way to get to me. It's actually a pretty decent build in the end, I've got to say. Like, the door drops down just in front of that door. They don't go that way anymore. Break down that relay, please. Oh, 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 oh did you see that? She came over the top. She tried to hurdle and take a shortcut, and the door closed just before she got there that worked an utter treat i love that shit right so the blast door itself works really well you can implement that onto whatever you like probably not behind a door itself there's no way to connect or oh, actually actually there kind of is Oh, I just had a wonderful idea. Okay, guys, look, I've been working a long time on this. I've just destroyed half the base, but that's okay. I have an idea. Let's rebuild that. Let's get something going out the front here. I have an idea. Something that clicked in my mind that probably should have clicked a long time ago. People are going to be yelling at me about that in the comments. I'm sorry, but I finally figured it out. Now, see, I was going about this all wrong. I thought that the zombies targeting the door was a bad thing, but I forgot that you can now get yourself powered garage doors. So I was using the normal ones that can't be connected, and I was using the relays on the bottom there. So, by logic, if I actually use logic once in my life, I can still have the relays there just in case they do decide to come through a different way. But if I connect that to you, and then that one to the door, and then the door to the other relay, then that means, although now it's open, which is kind of annoying, I'll have to deal with that in a second. But that means when they destroy this door, that will break that chain and the door will close. Now, I might have to use reversible power here because the door being... This is what I mean, you know? The door is on and therefore open, which is freaking frustrating. That's not what I need at all. I need it to be closed. But if I can get that to close and have the, uh, the, the blast shield door behind it, then as soon as that door gets broken, the door will close and we'll be nice and safe. I think I can get it to work. I, I'm, I'm closer with this one than I was with just the relays. It's annoying that it's open, but I think we can figure it out. You know what? Even better than those doors. If you're going to insist on being powered, then I'm going to insist on messing up. Let's use the vault, uh, the, the hatch door, actually, rather than the normal door. What I was thinking is getting, like, this vault door that's powered and putting it on its side like that. Which side's the hinge? That side's the hinge. So let's go like that. So you can see that when it's powered, it's on, but actually closed for what we need. So like that. That blocks off the gap. Well, it looks kind of hideous, though. Thank God I'm not actually using that one. But the same kind of idea will apply to the hatches, like this. Let's go Let's go this way, like that, because that's going to give me a, a nice little block for when that goes up, like that one. So there, that is now on, and it's out of the way. There we go. So the zombies will cruise up, start beating on that. I have a nice line of sight to all of them. In fact, I can even punch the zombies in the face, just like the fist only horde base. And that's going to be nice and lovely doubly. Let's get this. Let's get my old power door. Let's get my blast shield up like that. And if I just go through the other side, grab you onto there. That is now on and that is now ready to rock and roll. There we go. All right, so we can still use this as an entryway for us. I might have to put like a switch somewhere or something. I don't, I don't know, maybe even reverse the power to a motion sensor to turn off what I need to come through. But we will be able to use this as a door with a switch anywhere along this circuit. But let's just do that just because. Let's go here. Let's go switch like that. And we're going to connect all that up. Uh, maybe just like around here. We'll put a secret switch up the top over here that the zombies can't reach. Just to make sure nothing awry happens. We could use this as an entryway for ourselves. We can come and go as we please but the zombies will get stuck if they break through. This should hopefully work. Right, here we go. So with a little bit of tinkering, I've actually not only made myself a blast shield, but I've also made myself like a zombie lock, like an airlock for zombies. So at the moment, I can get into this first little chamber. That is fine. I can flick that switch. That will close behind me so no one can sneak up on me. And I can now enter the rest of my base. There's also a red line on the floor where the door closes. So I know if I'm behind the red line, I'm not going to get locked out with the rest of my zombie pals. And that's going to work really, really well, actually. In fact, if I'm out here, I could probably even have put the switch like on the side 
side of this block here, but I haven't got anything on the other side over here. You can make it more secure and have it like that so you can't reach through and do that. But this... This should work nice and easily because as soon as that whole chain there is broken by destroying that door, let's just give it a test. Door closes. Easy as you like. Oh, we're cooking with gas. We are really sprinkling some fuck yeah on this zombie base. I thought I had given up on this. I thought it was all done and dusted. And then a little, little brain spike. For once in my life, I had a thought that actually made coherent sense. And this is what we ended up with. I'm pretty confident about all of this. Let's put myself in the back here. Let's just freaking send a horde to it. Let's just get the horde going. Let's get it cracking. I'm pumped. So I'm feeling so confident with all of this that I've skipped ahead to the next Horde Night that I get, which is day 11 for Jewel Park, because you can't repeat them, which I've talked about before. So I feel like this should go reasonably well. I've banged down some lanterns around the place to see what's actually happening. Here comes the Horde from the backside, which is kind of interesting. I am happy as, ha as a Larry in some little house down here. Yeah, okay, they're going around to the front. They're going all, and they're, they're ignoring the vault door, which is good. Thank God I wired up the rest of this wall. So it's basically like booby trapping the wall just to kind of ruin the zombies' hopes and dreams. They're all coming around the front. They're doing, oh, no, you, okay, I'm going to have to just do some uh, some manual cleanup of the zombies who are trying to go over the roof because I'm not trying to test whether or not they can jump over the walls. I didn't build a roof on this bloody place. So I'm testing whether or not the walls will work. There we go. They're through. They're coming through, and the blast shield closes in their face. Oh, my God. Josh, that's shit shooting by you. Uh, it's hard to shoot because when you shoot, it stops the, uh, the cursor from moving because I'm out of my body right now. But there we go. Look at that. So now they've broken through there. The hatch door is closed, but they're spending their time beating their way through that garage door, which is fine by me. Okay, you guys are going the wrong way as well. You need to stop ruining my experiment. No, stop it. Stop going through. This is why I made all these back walls out of reinforced concrete. Specifically, some muppets like this didn't come through and cause me any sort of issues. Although it's interesting to note that with that blast door closed, they now think it's faster for them to come through the back way rather than the way everyone else is going. So let's open up that for them, like that. Yep, okay, they're now ignoring the back wall, even though they were just there, and they're coming through the next layer of the fences. That'll be fine. No, get off my roof. Get off my roof, you bastard. Stop it. Stop it. Arlene, you've been a real bitch about this here. Stop doing that nonsense. Everyone else is beating through there, and the blast shield closes again. All right. That's a pretty successful test, I think. So even on a horde night, where they're all coming through... Oh, God, I'm, I got my camera all sorts of mixed up. There we go. Even on a horde night, where they're coming in the back way through here, as soon as the blast door closes, that's then the quick way for them because the blast door's super-duper strong. But that's really, really good. I'm glad that I tested that on a full horde with them coming from a different angle. It proves that they will favor this above everything else until the blast shield closes. That was super duper successful. And more importantly, the thing I really like about it when they come through like the wall that's behind the relay is if you're right here fighting around, when they break through these blocks, you have enough time to see that they're coming through, duck back, hide behind the red line, so that when the blast shield closes, you're not caught up in all of that mess. That worked out really, really well. I'd almost given up on that whole like double stagger design and having a door that you could use. But turns out if you're going to invest all that materials into all the motorized stuff, you may as well get yourself a vault door as well because that worked an absolute treat. While I've got the horde currently running, I'm going to run another little test just to see if I can do it with all... Ah, oh, shit. No, the horde just ended. Damn it. I can't go back and do it again either. I left the speed up. That's really annoying. Look, if I go back into this, it's no longer horde night. Oh, that's really upsetting. All right, whatever. We can do it without the horde. We know the horde's going to come around here anyway. I can still do the tests. But I want to know that maybe I can do it with just hatches along here, not the arrow slots. So, like, we can have this as one big open entryway. You know, we flick that switch. I mean, we still have the whole, like, zombie lock going, but all these hatches go down at once. You flip that again, they all come up again. Yeah, that should be fine. But if the zombies break any of those, then I should be fine back here because the blast shield should protect me. So let's give that a red hot crack. Let's go like this. Let's get bikers again because that was actually pretty good for me last time. Let's go radiators just so they do hopefully enough damage to get through here in a reasonable amount of time. All right, come on, knackers. Here we go. I can hear a lot of other zombies out there as well. Yes, yes. Break through. Come to me. Do my bidding. Lots of other dogs and things coming through. But this would be perfect. You know, arrow slots are a little bit uh, restrictive. But here, you could just have... Have your way with the zombies. I mean, I'm not going to deal with that dog. That can fuck off. But the rest of these puppets are doing a fair bit of damage, which is good. There's another dog there. Can I poke it through? Where are you? I saw you. I want to boop the snoot. Give me that snoot. Where is the booping? Now, nah, it's been it's has been mauled by the rest of the zombies. Oh, they're coming over the top. That's not good. No, stop doing that. Let's get you. Let's just uh, do some sneaky deaky repairs on that one. Let's make sure they're not coming through that way. Yep, I've upgrade all of them. Why not? Make sure they're not coming through over the top. Oh, 
Oh, that's almost broken down. I can see him slowly doing a lot of damage. It's going to take a while, but I think they'll get through eventually. The middle thing's almost gone. Take a step back. I think there might be another layer after that even. I'm not too sure. Nope, there's not. And it goes right in their face. Perfect. Oh, that's absolutely perfect. That's almost even better than the arrow slots. Like, if you have to have a big entryway into your base, get yourself one of these. If you're going to invest, how much does a, a powered vault door cost? Power, no, that's like it's not power at all. Power, power vault door. What are you going to cost me? You're cheaper than the, the blast shields. You, you could absolutely make five of those. If you can invest that much materials into making two or three or however many blast shields that you want, you can definitely invest into three or five or however many vault doors as well and get that whole system working just a little bit better. That's almost even better than what I had before with the arrow slots. Oh, that's really good. I'm glad I decided to test that. Right, I almost didn't think about this at all. I was almost done and I had this little brainwave and it's worked out an absolute treat. I love that. That's so much better. That worked so well even. I'm going to give myself a hero shot at the end of it. I'm blocking the force field. It's not the force field. The, the blast shield itself. So yeah, there you go. You can use those garage doors to give yourself like an extra automatic defense against the zombies. If they break through, you can have a way to stop them dead in their tracks to then make them dead in their tracks. Give yourself enough time to get out of there and get to another hard point. So... I mean, we ended up doing it as well. I mean, sure, the part on the inside has some cheese involved, but the part at the front, there's no cheese involved with that. It's only like that second kind of entryway that I used it for. If you're just going to use the powered vault hatches, you don't need to use any cheese at all. You can keep the zombies at bay easy as that. Well, not easy as that. That's a lot of resources went into that. Definitely late game, but you can definitely get it done. So I'll have to come back and build some more what I think are cool bases in another episode. Because this episode is done. So thank you guys for watching. Most of all, thank you to all the patrons on Patreon who made this episode possible. If y'all loved it, make sure you hit the like button down below and subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter. If I don't talk to you there first, I'll see you in the next episode. Have a good one.